<laughs> Took me a little bit. So the last one I want to talk about here and for our fun little review is, I just want to pull them up, is I'm going to be talking about uh, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin. Uh, so let me just kind of fix this up here too because I just want to like display the, the fun little movies. So uh, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin is a OVA. Just in case for those who don't know the acronym, is the Original Animation Video, if I'm not mistaken, right? I, I always mistaken as Original Anime Video, but it's Original Animation Video when I had looked it up. I could be wrong. Someone correct me, please. Commodore, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, but it's a six-episode uh, six OVA that curtails, um, basically follows the story of Char and Sela, for the most part. And uh, let me get back here. It follows... Um, Char right here and follows Sela. Where is she? My gosh, she's not even that. She's like, well, because Char is, is one of the bigger protagonists, but like follows Sela. Sad that she's got a little sideline there. Um, but again, the uh, OV is, is a six episode series that follows Char and Sela through their lives amongst many other minor characters that were either briefly seen, had some screen time, or were never seen before in the original series. This all takes place about 11 years before the One Year War. It takes place in UC Universal Century 0068 and goes onward. Um, from there, each episode kind of covers like a different time frame. So the first episode, we get like 0068. Uh, the second episode, we are treated them a little bit older. So like 0071 to 2. Um third episode we go a little bit more into the future and 0070 like 75 to 77 and then the last few episodes is basically uh, merging in towards the war with 0078 to 79 the fun thing about this series and it's not too much of a spoiler but it's it's what I would like to describe as Rogue One to Episode 4 is what Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin is to Mobile Suit Gundam The Original Series. The way the movies end branches immediately into the original Gundam series. However, part of my little, uh, you need a Gundam, should I watch this first? And would I recommend you to watch this before or after? And what I'm going to tell you right now, you should watch this bef uh, before, or sorry, watch this after you watch the original series, let me go into a little bit more explanation behind the origin. <laughs> this entire movie, like this entire OVA is a UC elitist's dream, like myself. Um, this series covers a lot of historical events that we've only heard about or played in the video games, but never truly seen it or actually had, had it depicted in such a way. I think the biggest ones that stand out to me is was how Xeon was built, Operation British, and the Battle of Loom. Um, to my knowledge, from what I've gathered from the Gundam fandom in, in the past, um, the way that Xeon was built, we got ideas about um, Daikun poisoning Xeon and then taking it over, but we don't really understand why or the how to that, and the movies elaborate a lot more on this. Operation British, we know, like, if you watch, like, the opening title sequences, like, the colony, or you might see the meme of a colony drop, right? We know that a colony dropped on Earth, but we don't know the context of it or anything. Most of us, as most of us fans, what we got out of context were from comic book, or, sorry, not comic, manga or um, video games, where they explain how, like, what happened to this colony and how they utilize this colony to drop it on Earth. And we got that in here. And even the biggest one is the Battle of Loom, which I was really, really excited to watch because the Battle of Loom, which was also noted as the One Week War, um, was the initial fight that brought in the mobile suits. You know, like the idea that Federation was going to fight against this colony furthest from the Earth. And it's like, what do these little piss ants think they can ask uh, demand freedom from us? We're not going to give them independence. We're going to fight back. They got nothing against us. And that was the first battle in the entire war that they found out about mobile suits. And that was the biggest one of them all. Uh, I thought that was like, it was incredible to watch that and how the events played off from there. There was a little bit of a disappointment with the loom fight, but it's not necessarily the loom fight itself. It's what happened before it. 
Um, so, like I mentioned, with all this newer stuff, too, and going into what I was going to mention, not much of a spoiler, but um, the series itself, like, we see in the very first episode, too, where there's, like, gun tanks. For the longest time, what I've always known was that, based off the information, and by the way, I want to kind of back up to Battle of Loom. The only time I ever experienced this was actually playing in, in one of the games. I think if I remember, I played Battle of Loom in Encounters in Space. Same thing with Operation British, if I'm not mistaken. And that's how we get a lot of information about those two um, battles or events. But speaking of, of that one, too, um, the whole mobile suits. Because Battle of Loom was so critical that it introduced mobile suits and completely flabbergasted and, you know, blew the Federation out of the water. They were surprised. They were outgunned, quite literally, by the Xeon, which was a surprise. They introduced mobile suits earlier on, like they had gun tanks in the first episode, and they later on introduced gun cannons, which they were trying to say they were obsolete or outdated models and stuff like that. I'm like, but if they were already aware about mobile suits... Why Why was it a big surprise when it happened during the Battle of Loom? You know, it kind of took that that magic away, and I felt. Um, I think I need to also maybe backtrack a little bit for those who don't or know about this as well, but Origin is actually a manga translated into, um, into the series. Uh, if I am not mistaken, this is probably the first Gundam series to do that because most Gundam series are the Gundam series and then they get translated into manga, right? Where this is a manga first translated into the into an anime form. And they only translated because Origin was a retelling of the original Gundam with all this background story. Origin movies is specifically the background story only. No redone of the original. Um, so what I really liked about that part, though, is that we got all this backstory about all these characters, not just Sayla and Char, which are the prominent characters of these movies, but everybody from the Zobby family, Rumble Rawls family, and a bunch of other side characters, too, that was like, oh, wow, like, you get stuff from, like, Kozun and uh, Clamp. Um, you get things, even with the main crew base, which I was, I was kind of a little bit miffed because they got a little bit more screen time in the later movies. I didn't want them to have as much screen time. I want to focus on these other characters because... When you come into the, the original Gundam series, all you get is the main cast and crew, and then all the characters you see in this movie are sidelined. There are minor characters to, you know, semi-important characters, with Char and, and the Zabi family being more prominent as, like, antagonists, basically. So that's kind of, like, frustrating to me. Um, but that's kind of the reason why I would almost recommend why Origins should be watched after you watch the original Gundam series. Um, cause you're not going to have the same appreciation for these characters. Cause when you watch the original series, like I remember this guy, what, why are they downplaying him? Hey, I remember rumble. Oh, well, he's only got like a, about five episodes or so. Oh yeah. Do, do, oh, there's those only shows up a few times. What, what's going on? Then he's here at the battle of Solomon. Huh? So you see what I mean? It, it kind of becomes like that, but. As a UC elitist, as a Gundam fan of the Universal Century, th this is our dream. We get to have more story, more background, more canological uh, information about these characters. And I really love that. On top of that, it's the world building. It's setting up everything that led up to the one-year war. What events transpired from one or from point A to B to all the way to Z, which is the one-year war. Uh, I love all that world building, all the characters introduced, everything that set this up. I'm like, mm, it's delicious. That's great stuff. Um, there wasn't a single character I was not interested in the movie. Even though there are some characters you could hate, it's not they're not that are not interesting. Not in, they're not saying that they're not interesting at all. So I was like, yeah, it was very thorough. Um. Uh, some things I didn't like about the movie, though, it was some of the over dramatic theatrics. I'm looking at you, Char. You, Char. There, there's some moments in the movie which it's that's what I call like that anime theatrics. I mean, what do you expect it's anime? But uh, I expect more from a realistic one. Um, Char has this like unbridled determination from such a young age, and I'm like, 
okay, I can kind of get that, but like the way he behaves and mannerisms, like it just seems so extreme for someone of his age. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just the way I looked at it. It just seems too over dramatic at times. Like when people like hit him or do something, he would just stare at them like, mm. I was like, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, um, gotcha. Uh, or you know when he comes across uh, Edward, uh, when he came come across, well, as Eduardo come across Char. I mean, that, 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 that just, it's kind of Captain Obvious of the story. If, if you knew Char Aznavul as a character and all that, it's, like, it's kind of Captain Obvious. Um, and kind of, again, going back to a little bit, uh, there are mobile suit fights in every single episode. There's more so towards the latter few, because especially when it gets closer to the one-year war. Uh, but I think it, it was kind of nice. I, I see what the, the team was trying to do in putting a, a fight in every single episode, right? To make it a little bit more, you know, exciting. Other than that, it just becomes more of a political and war drama versus like an actual, like real robot in there. And I think that I, I feel that was just too forced. Um, I honestly would prefer to see more about the characters and, and see more involvement with them. Um, I know, I, I can't remember cause I have the whole entire manga, by the way, the origin manga, there's only six episodes. The manga spans 10 volumes. They are thick. Yeah. That was fun reading it. Um, and, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going on there, <laughs> but, um, I would, of all the characters, I would wish if they were going to show a little bit more too, I wanted to see a little bit more about, um, Zeonzum Daikun. And a little bit, not even a little bit, because we don't even get, we got Bright at the very end, but I want to see more about Bright's uh, early years, too. It's, that's something I wish I had seen a little bit more of, because I like Bright as the as a commander, or a captain. He's the acting captain of White Base, and um, I, I like him as a character, especially throughout the other, other series, too. And I would love to learn a little bit more about his past. We don't really get much about him. We get some ideas based off of, like, some manga, like, you know, like, talking about him but never really seeing it I, I i would have loved to see that granted we got to see everybody else i would just love to see a little bit more about him we saw more mirai than bright mirai makes sense but i would like to see a little bit more of bright uh, and then with the mobile suits themselves too so the fun thing about this is that i wouldn't really call it so, consider it fun I don't know how about some of you feel about this, but you got your your regular between like it's either cell animation or, or hand drawn animation, and then you got the CGI animation. Most of the story is told in that regular animation slash cell animation, and then you get that this the CG animation for the the mobile suits. All the fights occur with that, and sometimes kind of intersplice with that too, and that kind of drives me nuts. Uh, it's a little bit of inconsistency between the artwork and animation, and it kind of takes you out of the, what I would like to call like the movie element, right? Like when you're watching a movie, you want to be into it, right? Not be pulled out to pulled out of it at any point. And I feel like when you see the CG models of the of the mobile suits, like the Zaku's or the mobile workers and the gun tank and gun cannon, it it takes it out there, and it kind of gives this like, I love the movie. But, you know, I'm, not, I'm just trying to use that as a comparison. Kind of gives it that, like, Roger Rabbit. Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of appeal where you get this cartoon with real uh, real life and it just it looks a little bit funnier, weird at times. Not saying that that's what Roger Rabbit is, but I'm just trying to give a bad analogy, I guess. Uh, but I really hate that that CGI look. The CGI, when they're, they're fighting and all that, was fight. But when they, it was fun, or sorry, when they fight, it's fun. When they mesh it together with the, the cell or the regular animation, it looks awful. Examples of this is like when you see the gun cannons in the hangar, the gun tank fight sequence uh, when it's rolling down the the um, the city, um, and a couple of other times throughout later in the episodes where they because after that after those two I mentioned most of it is CGI'd animation with the fights. Then you don't really see too much with the animation. But when you get into those couple of episodes, when I give you those examples, it just, I didn't like the way it looks. It took me out of the element of watching and enjoying the movie. I'm like, this looks different. This looks odd. This looks out of place. and doesn't match up. I would rather have it like hand-drawn animation that matches up with it. So that way it, it, it marries it very, very well. You know, and that's my preference. I'm a little bit picky about that. 
teach their own, right? Um, that being said, there's not a whole much I can cover about Origin because very much so, it is mostly background. It is giving every Gundam fan of the UC Century everything they're kind of asking for. Uh, like I said, I'm like, I could not complain about this these movies at all, really. There's some little nitpicks I had about it, but honestly, I, I really couldn't uh, bag on it too much. I think the only thing I, that really just like takes me out of there, again, it's the CG animation with the animation and some level of the pacing and storytelling at times uh, kind of feels a little bit janky jumping around at times with the characters. And that's a problem that you get when you have a huge cast. Like I, I would almost call it like Game of Thrones casting, right? Where this huge cast of characters. And if you don't have a proper way of like pacing it and going back and forth between the characters, it gets too wonky or too janky of a pace. And it kind of feels very bumpy. And I kind of feel that with origin at times uh, where we're getting pulled at every which way possible. But that's because they're trying to stay consistent with the timeline and the storytelling. So that was about it for me. As for if you're new to Gundam and if you should watch this first, kind of like I already alluded it, well, not even, I said in the very beginning of this uh, video here, is that no, don't watch Origin first at all. In fact, I would recommend you watching the original series or one portion of the, like, of the um, UC timeline before even touching this. Um, Origin dives so much so into the characters that are involved in the original Mobile Suit Gundam and how they reappear in some other series too, that if you watch this first and then you watch everything else, you won't have the same appreciation. In fact, you're going to be upset because, this, again, how I was saying that, as a fan, and like going through all the years, we watch these series and like, I wish we had more about these characters. I wish we knew more about these characters. What's their backstory? And we never got that. The, this OVA answers your questions and gives you those backstories that you've always been asking for. If you watch this first and then you go into the series and other, or like the main series and the other series, you're going to be so disappointed. You're going to be really, really upset. Like, these are major characters. What happened to Dozel? Why doesn't he have such a major role? What about Rumba Roll? Or what about Sailor? What, what's going on here? You're going to get frustrated about that. And it, it would drive you nuts. That's why I would say... If anything else, watch the original Mobile Suit Gundam, be it the trilogy or the series, and then do what I did and watch Origin next. You'll have a finer appreciation for it. And trust me, even though it's dated <laughs> about 35 years after the fact of the matter, you're still going to really enjoy it. It's not going to take you away. The animation's not going to push you away between 19 or like late 70s, early 80s animation and 2015's animation. You're not going to get disappointed by that, so... I think it's a, it's a fun ride. Great, great on the storytelling, backgrounds. Action's fun. Not a whole lot of it, so don't expect much. Maybe the last episode is where you're going to expect most of the fight. And I'll, I'll give you this much. Actually, I'll say one thing, too. I hate cliffhangers. I really, really hate cliffhangers. Episode 5 goes into a cliffhanger for episode 6. By cliffhanger, I'm talking like movies like... Matrix re uh, Reloaded to Matrix uh, Revolutions or Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest to At World's End, it does not satisfy. Where like it, or even though another offender was the Hobbit movies, Desolation of Smog, and then to um, the. Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings. Oh, well, I already uh, Game of Thrones doesn't really do that. It's I already mentioned. I, I did. I did mention Lord of the Rings though. I was talking about the Hobbit. I don't know if you heard me. But Desolation of Smaug, going into what's the what's the third Hobbit movie? I don't know the Hobbit movies as well as the Lord of the Rings. I, it's like the Battle of the Five King, like Five Earths, or something. I can't remember what it was. But it's basically it's that build up towards the end, and there's a final fight that's gonna happen right there, that awesome fight, and then the movie ends. Game of Thrones is the next. I would say Matrix Reloaded. For me, Matrix Reloaded was was the most infamous one where Matrix Reloaded build up to this fight and then cuts it off. I got pissed, and then. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, builds up to this epic thing, cuts off. Next movie. Episodes 5 to 6 does the exact same thing, and that's the Battle of Loom. Where it's a build up to the Battle of Loom, cuts off, and that's how it is. If I, don't, if I remember correctly, these movies were released theatrically in Japan, and the way that they were released branched it off. So if you had watched episode 5 in the theaters, and then you got to the ending, I would have been pissed. 
I am royally pissed about that. Lucky enough, I had it on Blu-ray. I mean, you, you can see it on that screen right here. But I, I got these these lovely little Blu-rays right here. So I, I, I did not get mad about that. Not mad about that. <laughs> but I, I could still experience that. Overall, what I would give Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin gets a 4 out of 5. I know, it seems like I'm giving a lot of 4 out of 5s, and trust me, a lot of the Gundam series are actually pretty good. Um, that's going to kind of change up with some of the other series. I can't guarantee all of them are going to be 4 out of 5s. Um, there's that mythical 5 out of 5, which is only given to the most prestigious, the most perfect, the most... Yeah, that's going to be kind of hard. Actually, there is only one series, two series that, that could come up with a perfect score. Granted, I would say this much is that the original Gundam was one that I gave an original score of 5 out of 5 in the past. Um, but that's a moody one for me. It's usually a contender with one other series once we get up to it. And I'll hint at it 